Hey friends, so have you ever been so frustrated with your art that you actually asked yourself, maybe I shouldn't be making this my career, or maybe I shouldn't even be doing art? I've actually have had those days and I still get them from time to time, but everything really changed for me when I had this one mindset shift that this video is all about, the thing that I talk about in this video. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but first, the thing that I'm drawing in this video, it's, a, it's this giant fox with like this character, got it right here. It's this character facing off uh, against this giant fox being with like glowing fiery eyes. And I really think this is like a metaphor for what I talk about in this video and that as artists, we face this massive like thing up against us when we sit down to create something. I should mention too that if you want to ink this drawing, um, I have a link to where you can download the line art. You can print it out and you can ink it yourself. You can follow along while I, while I, while I ink it or you can you know, do it on your own time or whatever, but I think it'd be fun. Like I was saying, this is a metaphor for the things you face every day as like a creative person. When you sit down to create, it's sometimes, it's like a monumental effort to make something. What I talk about today is the three different things that I think that helped me to go from a guy who didn't feel like he was accomplishing much to a person who's being way more productive and more importantly, more satisfied with the work I was making. So the three things that I get into is number one, making magic, talk about dealing with failure and a mindset that's from the sports world that I think actually really applies well to artists. And then the third thing I'm talking about is day trading creativity. And I get into what, what that that's all about. Now, if you stick around until the end, I'll be sharing this silly mantra that I say to myself every morning that helps me be more productive and satisfied with the things that I made at the end of my workday. So let's get right into it. Last week, a friend of mine was writing a screenplay and he was just having a rough day with it. And he, he barely made a dent in it all day long, working on it, you know, from, <laughs> from morning to evening. And some days creativity or like working in, on anything creative, it's like that. The sun rises and the sun sets and the only progress you've made on your, your project was sometimes just thinking about it. And so me and my friend, we were just lamenting to each other about how hard it is to just be creative sometimes. And then I, um, I said this to him, we were texting, so I'll read the text here. He said, I said, you know this already, but creating something from nothing is legit magic and writers have to do it every day. So don't feel bad that it's actually hard some days. And that's a message that, you know, I extend to anyone who creates, not just writers, but you know, whether you're an artist or you're drawing comics or you're writing music or, um, you know, you're making films or making video games, or doing whatever creative project that you're on, um, you're conjuring up something from nothing and it's going to be hard. You know, if you think about the greatest event in history that ever happened was when space, time, and matter all exploded onto the scene from nothing. You know, first there was absolutely nothing. There was, uh, there wasn't a here or a there or an up or a down. There wasn't time. There wasn't anything. And then poof, a universe. Scientists are still trying to unlock that mystery. And as far as like all of our instruments can detect, you know, they, they think it only happened once. But in a way, it also happens every time you sit down to the drawing board and you conjure up something where there was nothing. So don't feel bad that it's actually hard some days. Don't feel bad like if you felt like you were a failure today. And really that's like one of the things I wanted to talk about today is that you shouldn't let failure or let a bad day keep you from creating, right? You shouldn't really focus on that that off day or that bad day and you shouldn't really focus on that good day or that like day where you're really on we should just focus on is showing up and creating something every day now the cool thing about failure is that what you fail at and how often you fail 
should be this diagnostic for how much you're growing. So when you succeed at something, you're usually blind to what part luck actually played into that. But when you fail, you can see everything that went wrong from whether it's your personal shortcomings or maybe just straight bad luck. And the key is to turn that failure into a learning experience and let that inform your next attempt. So I used to think that someday I'd get to this point where every drawing would be perfect and every project would be like this this home run because I'd finally mastered the craft and I could just execute all the time. And what I realized 25 plus years into this art career that I've had is that you don't really get to a point in life where you're just done failing. You just start failing in different ways, right? In fact, I would argue that if you aren't failing, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. I remember hearing an athlete talk about the rule of thirds, and it's not the compositional art rule of thirds, but this is a a different rule rule of thirds. And if I remember it right, um, she said that if you're working on something hard and if you're really like trying to push yourself, one third of the time you should feel really good. You should, it should just be a pla- a blast to like, you know, be doing this thing. But then another third of the time, it should be just okay. Like you showed up, you did it, it wasn't good, wasn't bad. And then that last third of the time, you should be failing and feeling like you really have no business doing this thing that you're trying to do. And that's how you really know that you're in the right spot. That's how you know that you're growing. It's it's easy, you know, if the thing is easy, you're not growing and you're not pushing yourself. If it's always a failure, you're pushing yourself way too hard and you still aren't growing. But if you find that, that sweet spot where one third of the time it's wins and you're, and you're feeling good and one third of the time you're just like, yeah, whatever, I did it. And one third of the time you're like, man, that was really hard. Um, then you know you're, you're, you're doing the thing that you, you should be doing. Now, I think maybe the worst thing you could do, though, as an artist is what I call day trade in your creativity. And that's where you pay too close attention to how you're doing day to day on your projects or on the creative pursuit that you're, that you're involved in. Um, day trading in normal terms outside of creativity is when you um, uh, is when you measure your success financially by how well you did each day in the stock market right so um, so like I had a couple friends who tried out day trading and they would invest in the morning they would watch those stocks move up and down they'd try to sell when stocks were high and they'd go buy the stocks that they thought were lower and you know, they just be like eyeballs on, you know, those those little metrics up and down, up and down, up and down. And at the end of the day, they would hope they'd have more money at the end of the day than they did at the beginning of the day. And these studies that they've done on day traders that if you don't know if you don't know what you're doing, ninety five percent of the people who day trade uh, stocks they lose money in the long run. So, um, and the problem really is, it's just they're focused on the, those day-to-day fluctu- fluctuations of the market. And, and really, they lose sight of the bigger picture. And they don't notice whether their decisions that they're making on a day-to-day basis are trending up or trending down. Now, the smart investors, the ones who make um, real money in the stock market, are, um, and, and I should say, the ones who do it with the least amount of stress and the least amount of like work, <laughs> they're the ones who make consistent deposits into a portfolio of stocks, and then they just forget about it. And they'll check on it maybe once a quarter, or they'll check on it every six months, or maybe they just check on it annually. And if something wasn't performing as well as they like, they'll go and make adjustments. They'll say, oh, you know, I only got a 2% return on that one. Let's move it over here where this other stock was getting a 10% return, right? And over the, the long run, over 10, 20 years, you know, they've made quite a return on this investment that they're doing and they weren't stressed out about it. And it was just something that they kind of were deliberately and intentionally doing, um, uh, you know, at, at regular intervals, but not thinking about it. So those kinds of investors, whether they're up or down at any given day, it doesn't concern them at all. It doesn't, you know, they're not checking to see how 
um, their stock did yesterday as opposed to today. It's the only thing that matters to them is trajectory. And that's what you really need to think about as a creative person, as someone who's making something, is, is thinking and worrying about that trajectory. By only paying attention to whether you're having a bad day or a good day, a productive day or a slacker day, you just might lose sight of the, the bigger picture. So instead, what you need to do is be like these, these long-term investors and make consistent, creative deposits and then just forget about it. Um, so whether you made something amazing one day or something forgettable the next day, it's not important. What really matters is that you showed up every single day and you just did something and you moved the needle a little bit every day. Um, then each quarter or every six months or every year, you take stock of your, your trajectory. Did you finish X amount of projects? You know, did you finish five more projects this year than you did last year or two more this quarter than you did last quarter? You know, are the drawings that you made that you're making now, are they, do they look better than the drawings you made last year? Right. Look at last year's sketchbook versus the sketchbook you're currently in and try to objectively look at are these drawings better? Are they, they more well constructed? Are they more creative, right? Or are you landing the type of jobs that fit the skill set that you have? You know, are you getting paid a little bit more for what you're doing? So whether they're up or down on any given day um, shouldn't matter to you, shouldn't concern you. It's, again, it's that trajectory that matters. And really what helps me to pay attention to not really worry about day trading my creativity and not really worry about whether I had a bad day or a good day. What I do is I, <laughs> you know, it's silly, but I repeat to myself almost every morning, I repeat this mantra. Um, and again, it's, it's like dumb, but it helps me. And it's this, some days you hunt the raptor, some day the raptor hunts you, but you always dress for the hunt. So think about that. Find a mantra that works for you. Remind yourself every day. You know, it's not about whether I'm up or down. Not, it's not about whether I got hunted by the raptor or if I was able to hunt a raptor. But did I show up today? Was I ready? Was I, was I creating today? And just worry about that long trajectory. Okay, so what's your mantra? What's the thing that you say every morning that helps you feel motivated, that helps you like get ready to take on the day? I want to know what that is. Leave that in the comments below. And if you don't have one, let me know what you think of my Raptor mantra, if that's something that, <laughs> that you're going to uh, start using in your sort of morning routine. If this video helped you at all, if you got any sort of like aha moments from it, then you're going to love my newsletter that I put out um, twice a month, every other Friday. Um, in it, I share like creative things that are inspiring me. Uh, I share what I, I'm, I've been working on recently. And I also share like, I call it the inspirational thought unit. It's one little like tidbit of information or a tidbit of inspiration that I've been thinking about that week. And I try to share it with you. And a lot of these YouTube videos evolve out of these little inspirational thoughts that that I put together. If that sounds cool to you, sign up for the, the, the newsletter. That link is below. Now, if you thought this was cool or interesting and you want to see someone who's putting this stuff into practice and how that's uh, affected their career and the things that they're doing, you're going to want to watch this interview with Emerson Tung that I did. He's a video game artist, professional video game artist, works on Doom, but he's made a book about these robot like drawings that he's been doing on the side. But this book is like so cool the thing that he's doing with that so watch this video you're gonna you're gonna love it